I'm going to be using Zotero to catalog our interviews. And this seems like kind of like, why am I doing this step? Um, but one of the things you'll, you'll realize is that Zotero is kind of where we bring everything together in, um, in, our, in our record. So um, this is a, a Zotero is um, installed on all three of the iMacs upstairs. And it's this little uh, Z logo down here. I don't know, it's kind of grayed out, I realize. Um, but th this is my own personal Zotero library. But if you scroll down to the sidebar, you'll see a bunch of these tan folders. And these are our shared libraries. And uh, we have shared libraries for a, a bunch of other different projects, like um, the very, very first oral history um, um, project that we did was um, on the Longshoremen. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Here we are, Louisiana Longshoremen. And here, these are our interviews that we did for them. Uh, they, these were done in 2012, so 10 years ago. Um, so this is like our, our archive. And, and what, what this is is a place where it allows us to kind of like keep track of everything we've done over the years, but it also ends up being a really great place where you can share complete collections with other people online. So um, th these were the, I guess they were eight interviews that my students did that semester. They were videoed. Um, they didn't write abstracts for them and, and some, of the, some of these other things here. Um, uh, but they did records, and, and then attached to these are each of their the transcripts for the interviews, which are available in, in Zotero, um, as well as, if we go back up to the record, a link to the video file for the interview itself, right? So here's the interview, the full interview, um, with the citation. Um, we, we are obviously using YouTube nowadays, but you get the idea. Um, let me get back to Zotero here. Um, it, it makes for like a full record of the interview. So one of the things that I think I told you about this collection at some point is that, you know, I had a scholar who, was, who had seen the little short documentary that we made with these longshoreman videos and said, oh man, is there any way I can get those interviews? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, you can. Do you use Zotero? And he's like, yes. And I said, send me your username. And I was able to invite him to that group library. And basically, in accepting the invitation to the group library, he was able to pull all of our Zotero record for this collection into his library, which I don't mean to historian geek out on you, but that's pretty damn neat. Right, um, I've had two historians um, and one linguist who wanted to do that. I I didn't have this set up when the linguist did it, and I actually ended up having to. They she mailed me a hard drive, and I had to make copies of all the files. Um, but now, right through the miracle of the internet, I can get this collection to anybody. Ultimately, all of our archives, there's an export feature where. Zotero will export in what's called Libtex format, which is a library archiving system that like the Special Collections uses over here. And so it gets into Louisiana Digital Library. The goal is ultimately your interviews will be logged in the Louisiana Digital Library so that like scholars all over the world, because this is a consortium, can go and look up you know, scholarly interviews and find these things. So like this is ultimately, right, this is kind of locally here in our archive here in the fourth floor of Beaubay. This is a way, what I use to organize my material, yes. But there's a bigger, there's sort of a bigger picture to all this. And, and I, just, I, I preface all this because, of course, the quality of information that you enter in to your Zotero record, I mean, I'll probably look at them and I'll probably edit them a little bit, 
but the quality of the information you put in your Zotero record is going to matter down the road, right? Because garbage in, garbage out, you've ever used a database or something, like something's just not entered right, and then it's, there's, there's a mistake, kind of like my cell phone goes to Justin Maestrom, and it has ever since 2008. You know, because some, when I switched to Verizon, the, the person entered it in wrong, and I'm forever the wrong name on that phone. It's very annoying. I can never get it changed either. Um, so I've added a shared folder. It's down at the very bottom because alphabetically that's where it's land. It's called the gig economy. Right? This is the folder where you are going to make one record. Right, like hunt for hunt for Red October, one and only one, um, and you're going to make a record for your interview. And so you'll notice this little green circular plus button, and um, since interview is is a a recent style of record that I've entered to this library, it comes up here. But you'll notice that there are all kinds of different records that you can add to Zotero if you have not been exposed to my come to the religion of Zotero lecture um, as a research uh, tool. Um, I'm going to really try to restrain myself today. Um, but, but as you can see, uh, lawyers, there you can put a case in there uh, or a hearing, um, you know, journal articles, letters, manuscripts, a lot of the stuff there with the connector feeds in automatically from databases and things like JSTOR. But we're going to manually create a record for this interview. So we're going to go ahead and create interview. And what that's done is create a new record in this database. Now this database has, like depending on the type of record it is, a, a series of fields. How many of you have worked with an honest to goodness database before? Like not Excel, but like a database. Yes? Um, psychology okay, so a psychology database. Were you entering information? Were you um, entering information to find other information? And querying the database. Okay, yeah. So that's what this is. I mean, this is actually a pretty. Ironically, like databases, um, if any of you have uh, the Windows version of Office, it comes with a program called Microsoft Access that's actually pretty damn good. Um, most databases now are server side, which I'm not going to get into, um, but basically the data is stored on the cloud as opposed to locally on your computer. There, in the early days of computers, there were things like DBase2, you know, perhaps. Ted, you had had DBase 2 or DBase 3 once upon a time. And yeah, I, I actually knew how to program in DBase 4 code at one point in my juncture uh, of life. And um, I wrote, a, a, I, I, wrote I, I, I could program in the Intergraph workstation machine language and in the DBase. And I wrote an application that made the two talk to each other. And I was under remunerated for it, let me tell you. So anyway, um, so a server side, what, what, what I mean by a server side database is that, um, so like when you buy something at Amazon.com and you're shopping at Amazon.com, that's using a server side database. The web browser basically goes and sends a query to Amazon's massive database saying, hey, I'm looking for those cool, you know, hot pink running shoes made by Nike, I, you know, and then it, it searches the database based on this criterion and comes up and then displays the data that it finds. This is kind of doing that in a very specific sort of way. All the Zotero stuff that we have is based in the cloud. So the nice thing about this is I'm also creating, like in terms of creating an archive, I'm creating redundancy because I'm creating a cloud copy of everything, right? If you think about it, I've got, I've got the, the, the PDFs, we'll, we'll show you how they attach to this, and then I've also got a link to YouTube. So between YouTube and Zotero, if Bo Bay Hall, say, were to get hit by an airplane, right? 
See, now it's now wake. Now I got your attention. Now, didn't I? Right? Uh, it, it, we would. There would be like at least some version of of what went on here in the cloud. So, anyway, um, nothing lasts forever, Ted. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, I apologize. Um, so. We have our item type interview right here of uh, the title. You know, I'm going to put up here, I'm going to put up, um, you know, uh, Joe Smith interview. I'm going to erase this record. All right, Joe Smith interview. Interview with last name Smith, Joe, right? But then you notice that there are these little buttons over here. Plus, interview with, this is a drop down box. Interview er. All right, I'll, I'll put my own name down just for giggles. If you have two, if you were doing an interviewee, say it was you interviewing three people, you could put all three of your interviewees in there just by adding them and putting a drop down box, right? So, like if I wanted to say this was an interview here, um, uh, an interview with, um, it's kind of crazy to put these in, not in order, but like Smith and I'll put Josephine. So Joe, Joe, maybe we should go Joseph, because yeah, Josephine may go by Joe. I'm not trying to confuse you here. In the abstract, actually, you noticed in the, the bullet points in the final delivered product up on WordPress, I'm having you write. I'm, and you're producing an edited thing. Now, some of you might want to, if you're feeling ambitious, make a quick audio edit of like highlights from your interview and you can put that up and we can embed that on the WordPress site and I think that would be kind of cool to do but everybody is going to write an abstract of their interview so you're, the abstract is going to you know be like tell us a little bit about your interviewee, what are some of the highlights of the interview, and so forth. To give you an idea of what this looks like, um, I have up here, um, I was trying to convince um, the Southern Foodways Alliance that they should be cataloging their gazillion interviews with Zotero. So this one is, is um, an interview I did in 2019, and you can see like the, the abstract is, is probably 500 words. Um, talking about, you know, um, who he is and, you know, what he does, his background. Um, this was about people working in the restaurant industry and so forth. Um, so we go back to our gig economy. We'll write an abstract. I'm not going to do something silly like just fill something in. You know, your date, um, you know, November. You can write this any number of, of way November 5, 2021, medium. Well, you are most of you, with the exception of Luke in this room, it's going to be audio recording, transcript, language. Nobody recorded in anything but English, correct? English. Short title. Smith and Smith interview. URL. This is your YouTube link. All right. I'm not going to put that up there. Uh, don't have an access. Archive. We're still calling it the documentary and oral history studio. You know what? We could probably call it digital humanities. I want to universally change all these, and I don't know how. I'm going to leave it documentary and oral history studio. Loyola 
University, New Orleans. Location and ar archive, the gig economy collection. You don't have a call number, rights. Extra, sometimes I usually put in the length of the interview. This is kind of where you can make notes and stuff like that. Um, if it's a video, I'll be like, you know, hour and 10 minutes and 35 seconds, um, Apple ProRes 422, 1080, like resolution. Like I'll be like, these are what we have stored, and I'll, I'll note those things. Um, but here you probably would probably be just like, okay to put the length. And then you've got a record, right? Joe Smith interview. Um, well, title. This is the Joe Joseph. And I mean, I'm going to delete this, but just for this, just for the sake of completion here. Um, so now the next thing you're going to do is, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, this is a receipt over here. This is not a transcript. It's a PDF file, however. And so the way you will attach a transcript to this file is simply drag it into Zotero, drop it on the record, make sure the record is highlighted in gray, let go, boom, you notice you just got a carrot, a little triangle carrot thing. You go in there, you said, it took that file, whatever you had named it, and it renamed it. It renamed it to Smith and Smith 2021 instead of the receipt that it actually is which is pretty clever actually so that's why you want to attach it when after you've um, so use the short actually it drew from it drew that it constructed that from the last names of the interviewees if you do this and you have a in Zotero just as an aside not saying you should use Zotero but you really should if you had a newspaper article in there and it was all properly done and you had a, one of those PDFs when you download a newspaper article and it's like 15 digits you drag it over that'll rename it as the newspaper article title and citation the year very handy because now now if I want to use this file right I can show file I can show it in my in the folder I can go into Zotero and say hypothetically I am building my WordPress page and I want to upload my transcript where is it well guess what it's right in my Zotero record and it's named something it's named properly and so I've got a PDF with a a proper naming convention generated by Zotero, right? You're all supposed to say, wow, that's amazing. It is actually amazing. And maybe I just love data a little too much, but I do. I love organization and I love data. And so this really this kind of thing really turns me on. This is amazing stuff. Um, and, and, and so you've got your, your um, PDF. I don't typically, I keep a separate file with release forms. I keep a separate database of release forms. I don't attach them to the record because they've got private information on them and their signatures. And, and it is typically, not in, a, in an oral history archive it is it, you typically do not find the release forms catalog with the actual interview they are stored separately I keep the paper versions to the extent that I have and when I did interviews in England all I have is PDF versions on my iPad and in the cloud but then I keep a, a cloud Zotero folder um, separate that's not a shared library um, so so I, I don't put them they're in the cloud, but they're not shared. Yes. Yes, I'll I'll be scanning them. I will I will have them scanned. Yeah, Liz will scan them. Yeah, totally. Is there like a set date that you want to go to 
Yes, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm, 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 I'm going to talk about, like, I'm going to put up some benchmarks. Yes. Thank you for reminding me, because that was something that is actually literally written on that iPad that I want to tell you all. Right. Um, I meant to do it before we started this. Are you okay? You're getting choked up at how awesome Zotero is, I know. Do you get paid every time you say that? Yeah. I mean, I get excited. I really do. So this is a really relatively easy thing to do. But one of the things that you, you, should, you should know is sort of like, so there are, there's one other thing I want to show you, and this is really, really awesome. And I know you're like, what could be more awesome than Zotero as it is already? But um, let's see. I need to go to this. I'm going to just make a new blank document here. All right. So Zotero does have a connector in Google Docs, but I am not here to dazzle you with that. I am here to just show you the simplicity of, you know how your WordPress post should have a citation? And then ultimately you're going to edit your YouTube record to have a citation as well. Right, we're going to... What, what, what we're going to do is go over here and, and click on this, and we're going to right click, create bibliography from item. Since we're historians and know the difference between the dinner fork and the salad fork, we are going to use the Chicago Manual of Style full notes, unlike those barbarians who use APA. Sorry. And we are going to say we want a bibliography. You could create a footnote as well if you wanted. And you say, OK. Sorry, I've got strong feelings on the <laughs> Chicago Manual of Style. And I go over here to my untitled document, and I hit Paste. Look at that. You're supposed to go, ooh. Yeah, it makes a bibliographic citation. If I selected 100 of them, it would alphabetize them in a flash, and you'd have a bibliography. Yeah, it's actually very awesome. And I will say, when I did my bibliography for my last book, um, it took me four and a half hours. It was 17 pages single-spaced. But that's like I went 100% digital, um, digital approach and was able to generate, you know, I mean, I had to categorize. So I'd go and find all my books and then journal articles and stuff like that. But oh, by the way, did I mention you can, you can arrange your data by type? Yeah, 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 interviews, stuff like that. So it, it's, it, it is incredibly badass. It really is. And if you're like, why didn't somebody show me this when I started college, is what you're all saying. So that's Zotero. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.